Say hello. Say hello. This is Kevin. If you've never met Kevin before. Alright. Me and Kevin have had a terrible week. A terrible couple of weeks, haven't we? Kevin's ripped one of his clothes off, jumping on the fence, screaming at a passing horse like he was definitely going to win a fight with a horse. And I have um, been crashed into in my car, had my car written off, had a bicycle accident. What else happened? Smashed a load of Prosecco glasses in the pub and I broke my camera and it's going to cost me over a thousand pounds to replace it. But it's currently in for repair and apparently it's going to take eight weeks to repair. So brilliant week last week, which is why I haven't done a vlog for the last couple of weeks because I broke my camera. But I've had a massive breakthrough today and I've launched something in my own business and something I'm going to be teaching people is about getting consistent with content. So to drop perfectionism, I shouldn't be arsed that I've broke my camera. I'm talking to you on my phone. I can do a vlog on my phone. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's crack on. But I wanted to talk on this vlog about the last four or five weeks and how much of a breakthrough I've had personally can compare to anything that I've done over the last three years. So if this is the first time you're watching this vlog, if we don't know each other, my name's Gemma Ray, and this time, three years ago, because it's the 1st of October as I'm recording this, and three years ago was the start of the decline of my mental health. So I started coaching. Uh, I was interested in coaching, self-development. I've read, I'd read a few books about it and I signed up with a couple of coaches and I've never done anything like this before. What happens when you start coaching? You realise that every area in your life that is fucked up is because of something that happened in your childhood. You know, your parents probably did the best they could, but little things happened, you've carried that bullshit throughout your adult life and then now you're fucked. And that's exactly what happened to me. So I realised that a lot of things I was doing in my life at the time, three years ago, all linked back to the fact that my biological father had pissed off when I was four years old and had not really seen him. And so it wasn't the upset that I hadn't really seen him. For 30 years, I hated that guy. I couldn't even say his name. I was absolutely full of anger and full of rage. But at the same time, quite confused because when I was seven, my mum remarried and my stepdad adopted us. And he's not my stepdad, he's my dad. He's my daddy. I absolutely adore the man. He's the best father I could have ever wished for. Because he went through the same crap as we did. His dad buggered off when he was seven. So he has just been the most wonderful, amazing father figure, like absolutely perfect. So I was in this position where desperate for my real dad to kind of acknowledge the fact that I even existed, but feeling guilty of feeling that way because I had a dad who, all right, might not have been my biological father, but was awesome. So I hated my real dad and I don't even like calling him dad, I get uncomfortable even saying that word, but I hated, I hated him. And I realized through my coaching that I had to do something different. So in order to forgive myself for stuff that had been going on that I'd been making crap decisions on, I had to forgive him and kind of set it all free and let it go. So I did what all good people do, trying to find their estranged family. I went on Facebook and I sent him a message and I just put, hi Tony, can I come and see you sometime? And waited for that little blue and white tick to change to a picture of his face to say that he'd read it. And over the next 10 days, I regressed into being a four-year-old girl again, four or five-year-old girl waiting for my dad to acknowledge that I existed. It was a very nasty, horrible time. I, I quit pretty much everything in my life at that time. I quit a band I was in. I was quitting clients. I couldn't even function, I was crying every day, I had never ever felt like this in my life and it was that fear of being rejected again. And I never got to say to my biological father what I wanted to say, I never got to tell him I'd forgiven him because he died 10 days later. And his funeral was horrific because his family rejected us all over again, even though we were trying to build bridges, for whatever reason, not gonna get into it, but it wasn't great. So feeling rejected all over again by the whole family, I literally lost my head and had a nervous breakdown. And that was just coming up to three years ago. Then spent about 15 grand on coaching that I didn't have. I really didn't have because I'd quit a load of clients. I wasn't earning a lot of money. My husband, God bless him, supported me on every crazy endeavor that I wanted to get involved in, trying desperately to find the answer. 
and I piled on weight in a six month period. I think I put on about three and a half stone and I've pretty much hovered at that ever since. So for the last three years, in addition to trying to stay on top of my mental health and I have lots of strategies that I adopt to kind of do that, including meditation, journaling, just thinking about things, realizing what's in my control, realizing what isn't in my control and how pointless it is, getting stressed about it. I ask myself, can I change it? If I can't, it goes in the imaginary fuck it bucket because there's nothing I can do about it. So that's been my journey over the last three years. But the one thing that was plaguing me was this weight loss. I could not shed this weight. I have tried everything. I've been a fully paid up member of Overeaters Anonymous. I've even been to an Alcoholics Anonymous class, even though I'm not an alcoholic because it follows the same steps and principles. I have tried coaches, diet plans, fasting, juicing, pills, you name it, I've tried it. Hypnosis, low carb, high carb, no carb, fucking whatever carb, I've tried everything. And four or five weeks ago, if you follow this vlog, I got to the point where I was like, I can't do any of this shit anymore, I've got to drop it. I'm so overwhelmed with it, I've just got to drop all of this kind of like conflicting information that was going on because I also work for fitness professionals. So I decided four or five weeks ago to try and do something completely different, which is actually the hardest thing I've ever done, which was love myself. So I went on this journey of self-love and self-acceptance because I always talk about the phrase, I am enough, and I wanted to try and embody that and live that. And it was really difficult, really, really difficult. And being completely transparent and honest, up until a couple of weeks ago, I was so low and so down because I was trying so desperately to instill these beliefs about self-love, but me and my husband, the person who's supposed to be there and love me, we were just doing this. Because basically what had happened, we renovated our house over the last couple of years, there's been a hell of a lot of stress, particularly financial pressure, and the two of us were just pissed off at each other for really silly little reasons and had put this like emotional block and barrier up against each other so we got to the point where we just weren't very nice weren't very tactile weren't very caring and both of us as bad as each other not really giving a shit about the other person and their needs so we had a really huge huge fight a couple of weeks ago to the point where i thought we were done you know, he was going to pack a bag, he was going to go, we were talking about selling the house, we even discussed what the hell we'd do childcare wise and where we'd both live and I was like, this is over, oh my goodness. But then we realised that we're just missing that one thing which was loving and accepting ourselves, both of us guilty of it and then being able to love and accept the other person. So we've worked really hard on it for the last couple of weeks and I can't believe the difference because we're just getting on so much better, but it's given me that confidence that I needed to be able to look in the mirror and go, do you know what? You are worth loving. And I might start crying as I say that because for so long I've not believed it. You know, when the one person who's supposed, well, there's two people in your life who are supposed to love you unconditionally and that's your mother and your father. And unfortunately, the person who happened to be my biological father in probably did love me in some way but never showed it for a long time and when you don't have that love from that person who's supposed to love you in your life for the best part of 30 years it, it causes it does cause damage on a really deep cellular level I believe so I Sean my husband gets a bit cross with me because he says that I live my life online and I like to entertain and I do and it's come from a place of when somebody fucks off out your life, it comes from a place of, hey, I'm here, I exist, look at me. And I'm not surprised that my life was then shaped to be on stage as a radio presenter, as a performer. And even though for the last three years, I've still maintained my confidence, I'll still go up and speak on stage, I've just felt like a huge part of me was, was dying off and that was that belief and love in myself. So changing this tactic of trying to love myself has been really hard because when you've still got those beliefs going around your head that you're not worthy of love, very, very difficult. But it's also been really powerful. And 
in my last five weeks of being on this journey, I have researched other people, particularly around body positivity, which I think is wonderful. If you are happy to strip off whatever your body size, whatever your age, and jump in front of a camera and dance and be proud of your curves, absolutely fucking awesome, good on you. But what I'm trying to do isn't that, it's about talking to my inner self, talking to my body and going, right, well, if self-love is respecting this body, this vessel that I live in, how can I nourish it right now with food? Do I want that piece of fish and those lovely vegetables? Or am I going to go and scoff a KFC for the fourth time? Do I want to sit here and binge on Haribo and licorice all sorts? Licorice all sorts, by the way, am I thing because the, the couple of occasions I do recall going out with my real dad, we stopped off at a petrol station and he bought me licorice all sorts. And I'm 37 years old and that was 35 years ago and I still do that now. Mad, anyway. But yeah, asking myself, what does my body need right now? What does my mind need right now? From a place of self-love rather than punishment has been absolutely wonderful. You know, and thinking, oh, my back's a bit sore. I'm a bit stiff and tight. Do you know what? I'm going to go to a yoga class. Or, oh, I'm feeling a bit mentally frazzled at the moment. Do you know what? I'm going to go to the gym and lift some weights. And yesterday morning, I went to the gym. And as I was driving there, it was a very strange feeling because I was thinking, I actually want to go for no other reason than I want to see what I'm capable of today. Rather than I'm going to the gym because I had a big, big meal last night and I need to burn off all the calories or what I have done in the past, I'm going to the gym and I'm going to look in that mirror with disgust at my own body and push and pull more weights because I'm a fucking ugly pig. I'm not doing that anymore. And it's, it's just really, really nice. And as I'm sitting talking to you right now, I focus on the camera, I don't really look at myself, but as I look at myself right now, I'm thinking, my hair looks all right today. If I actually put some makeup on, I feel really good. Without looking at myself in the mirror and pulling at my skin and trying to flatten my stomach down or finding the spanks that are gonna hold all the lumps and bumps in the right places. So yeah, it's only been five weeks now of trying to practice this self-love. It's only been two weeks since me and Sean have reconnected and started being more caring to one another, which has made a huge, huge impact. And the other way that it's made a big impact is in my own business as a marketing PR consultant, along with being an author and a radio presenter, I've wanted for a long, 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 long time to do an online programme that would help other small businesses to learn how to step into their light, put themselves out there and get some decent press coverage and also be consistent with their marketing. And today, well, this week for the last few days, I've created a sales page for it. I've secured some clients who are going to join in. But more than that, as I've been making like the graphics for it and seeing my own picture, I'm not repulsed. I'm not looking at the pictures of myself and going, oh, I've recorded a video of myself for the sales page and I'm really happy with it. And that wouldn't have happened even two months ago. I would have picked it apart. I would have been ashamed. And I have been ashamed because I put weight on. I've been ashamed to kind of stand in my power and give my expertise to people for fear of judgment of what they think about my weight gain. And I heard something the other day that when you are a bit reluctant and a bit scared to put yourself out there, you can guarantee it's not because you're thinking about what everybody would think. You're thinking about what your ex-boss might say. You're thinking about what that ex-boyfriend might say. You're thinking about what that particular critical judgmental friend might say. It's probably like a handful of people and you're worried about what they think. And I'm here to tell you, fuck what they think. Go with what's in your heart. You are enough, you really are. You only have one place to live. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna to get to 80 and realize I've spent the best part of 75 years hating the thing, the only place I have to live in this world. I am absolutely sick and tired and done with it. So I'm gonna round it up now because I have been chatting for 15 minutes. Thank you if you've uh, stayed this whole time. But remember, there's one thing I always say. You 
are enough. Say it, believe it, act it, be it. You are enough. Have a great week. Thank you.